Welcome to Tech Trends. Tech Trends is a podcast series that provides perspective on the latest trends in technology, fintech, and digital. On today's episode, we'll talk about the importance of creating a great client experience, what that means, why it's important, and what components are necessary for you to deliver an outstanding client experience to your organization and to your clients. I'm Anish Bamani, Chief Product Officer for Commercial Banking, and joining me today is Dee Somerville, Head of the Middle Office for Commercial Banking here at J.P. Morgan Chase. Dee, welcome to Tech Trends. Nish, thank you for having me. So Dee, it seems like everybody in business today is talking about the importance of a great client experience, but it feels like that could mean who you're talking to. Can you talk about what that means to you and to your organization and to commercial banking more broadly as a whole? And you're absolutely right. Client experience means many different things to many people. Um, and starting even with us, I think the way we look at client experience, even within our firm varies. So starting with commercial banking in the middle office, let's start with what the middle office is, right? So we're a division that actually supports clients through their onboarding and implementation. So bringing the clients into the organization and getting them acclimated to our tools and our capabilities. We service the clients. So these are the day-to-day people that are on the ground, actually helping the client um, answer their questions, their inquiries, teaching them how to use our platforms, our products, our tools. We also even have a client experience team. It's a dedicated group that actually measures the client sediment. So what do they think about our products? What do they think about our service? How are they interacting with us? Are we meeting their needs? So that's really the role of the middle office. And how does the middle office look at client experience? I think in three ways. First, we anticipate client needs, right? And how do we do that? We do that through data. We, we you know, interview clients. We actually survey clients on their experiences with us. Um, we review that data. We look at their behavior. Um, and try to anticipate actually what they might need from us in the future. We try to simplify and streamline their interactions with us. So whether they're using our digital channels, um, some of our software products, um, whatever it is, however they're interacting with us, we wanna make sure that process is um, straight through. We also wanna make sure it's seamless for them. You know, and finally, we operate with excellence, right? And that means making sure that no matter what question they have, no matter where they are located in the world, that they can reach somebody in a venue, whether that be phone, email, live chat, you know, virtual assist, whatever capabilities we have, you know, optionality is our friend. And we, be, we need to basically be able to address all of it. So Dee, I know in the past you've talked about the way to delight clients is through a combination of product innovation and service excellence. And I know a lot of people might think about okay, well, those both seem like no-brainers, right? But that might not always be the case, right? Can you say a little bit more about that? I can, and and let me start off with a quote. Um, So I'm going to read a quote from Steve Jobs. He said, get closer than ever to your customers, so close that you tell them what they need well before they need it and well before they realize it themselves, right? And so if you think about how he built Apple and anticipating client needs, this is no different than driving the best client experience, especially around product innovation. Right, clients want, what do they want from us? They want products that are seamless, easy to use. How do they measure us? If you think about it, in their personal everyday life, right, they have, a, they have a interactions with all types of technology, software, um, and even just think about simple things like online banking. You know, Anish, you and I can come into our building and by the time we enter the elevator and get to our floor, we could, we both have kids in college. We can sell them money, we can transfer money, we can pay our online bills within seconds, right? And by the time I get back to my office, I could have done a lot of my online banking very digitally, very easily. People take their personal experiences and they bring them to their professional life. They expect that same level of interaction with any type of software and digital capability that any bank offers, right? And so we're no different, right? We have to give them seamless experience. It's gotta be frictionless. J.P. Morgan Chase is a very large bank. We offer so many products and services. Our ability to navigate within those products and have the same look and feel. If a client's logging in and they're searching for a balance or they want the same report produced, if we give them five different UIs to deal with or five different experiences working with us, it becomes difficult for them to understand, right? So having that seamless experience across our platforms, across our products, probably one of the highest priorities we can produce for them. Some of the other things I would think about is scalable solutions, right? When we produce something for a client, it's got to be scalable. It's got to be something we can enhance and change and not be disruptive to their everyday business, right? 
the, the days of us doing these massive turnovers on the weekend and when a client comes in, everything looks different <laughs> is, is no longer acceptable, right? It's gotta be seamless for them. It's gotta be frictionless. It's just gotta be intuitive. And we've got to keep you know, striving for that kind of best in class design. And finally, I would say, and it's a big one, is around fraud and cybersecurity. That's an expectation of our clients, right? They're trusting us with their data. They're trusting us with their information. And we have to hold that bar really high to protect our clients and making sure they know that their data is safe with us and also for their clients as well. Yeah, so there's a couple of good points you raise in there, right? First, the people having the same expectations of you know, their technology of work that they have at home. We generally refer to that as a consumerization of enterprise technology or of corporate technology. I think that's a big one. Um, but also, I think a lot of people think about uh, designing for client experience as, all right, I wanna have uh, sort of the best client experience and the best client interface you know, possible. And they focus very heavily, as you point out, on the user interface, but that's where it ends. And I think one of the most important points that you, you bring out is, hey, look, if there's an expectation that a client's going to get sub-second response time or be able to do something straight through and open an account or whatever, you can't just build the front end interface. You have to look at the full end-to-end -end process through all of fulfillment in the middle office and the back office and make sure that you're designing something that actually can uh, can um, not only fix the front end, but re-architect all those processes as well, right? Spot on, Anish. I think that's probably where we as, you know, just as the banking industry are getting challenged to work across divisional lines, right? And making sure that everything from the front office to the middle to the back and operational works more seamlessly for the client. You know, we never want to expose the client to how the sausage is made in the factory, but we have to make sure it shouldn't, it shouldn't be their concern, right? right? It should be very seamless for them. And how do you do that? And, and I think you nailed it. It's really the new trend on the design thinking is all around bringing the client at the table, right? Even if it's the empty chair, someone has to be that voice of the client during the design phase and truly driving what is the client experience we want them to have we also need to be able to say, here's the client experience they want to have, right? Because we're communicating with the clients, they're telling us. But that has to be baked into the design up front and not towards the tail end to say, well, is this the intended impact, right? We should never have that question. It should be really brought up front to say, here's the exact experience we want the client to have. Now, how do we make this happen straight through, right? Frictionless all the way through the end to the operational people that are deploying some of these capabilities in the back. And I think the, the, the real point there is if you really want to, you know, uh, develop a world-class client experience, you have to be willing uh, to open up, uh, you know, a lot of those uh, longstanding processes that you have and, and sort of revisit the way you do things behind the scenes, not just you know, putting a UI on, a, on an old, uh, you know, an old tired process around that as well. You know, clients are getting more sophisticated. The technology is getting more sophisticated. And the days of us trying to bubble gum and bob wire things in the back end with a pretty UI in the front end, right? That's not going to work anymore. We really do need, and it's not just for our clients, it's for ourselves, right? Our, our, our employees are demanding it, right? There's the days of the widget processing are over Right? We need people that can actually be thought leaders in their space, experts, product experts, industry experts, and really offering that higher level service to the clients. Okay, so obviously product innovation is a big part of this, right? And I think everybody understands at least the, the importance of good design up front and making sure you design and build products and, and experiences that make sense. But, but it feels like that's really only you know, one side of the coin, right? Because that is all great when you're launching a product and then when it's in service and and uh, it's up and running and people are using it like then you have to actually sort of keep improving it as you go right and imagine that's where the rest of your mental office teams come into come into play right you're absolutely right and i think there's a couple of things you know in there to highlight and you're like so for for one um, what does it mean to deliver service excellence right because i'm a big believer that if you have the right product simplification and innovation coupled with the right level of service excellence right that's where you that's your sweet spot right that's where clients truly are delighted they truly enjoy the product the services that that you built um so when it comes to client service i think about what are the value add things client service people can do right if we build a really great tool right if our product is innovative it's digital clients have a seamless experience working with it 
then servicing the client becomes easier, right? We now can pivot to doing value add services. We can become trusted advisors. Um, we can support them um, you know, in their day-to-day -day business. I, we can start to build um, service people that have product expertise, industry expertise, segment expertise, um, and really learn to work with clients across all digital channels that they need to, whether it's their platform, our platform, APIs in the background, whatever it takes, but we're, we can pivot and support clients across all the, you know, all these different channels that they want to interact with us. So it really sounds like, you know, service excellence is just about, well, not just, but it really begins, begins with hiring really good people. hundred percent. I mean, if you ask me, Anish, like what the secret sauce behind all of this, we could have great products. We could have the best framework to deliver service. Um, but what it really comes down to is our employees, right? Um, and I think about how we invest in our employees, right? It's, you know, in a place like J.P. Morgan Chase, right, we have the opportunity to give people uh, unbelievable career paths here, right? We start with training, right? We give people professional training, product training, I would call it functional training, the role that they're playing for the organization. Um, we invest in our people tremendously. And on top of that, uh, we recruit talent. And, and you know, recently, if you think about the types of talent we're able to recruit, 10 to 15 years ago, I'm sure a number of us were saying, oh, we need to hire somebody that has banking experience, somebody that understands the financial markets. And today we've completely pivoted away from that. And now we're like looking at the blended workforce. What are the diversification of skills that we need to build an A team? Right. And now we're finding, you know, even in my organization, we're hiring people from the healthcare industry. We're hiring uh, data and analytical experts, people from other industries that are superior client service people, superior onboarders. And they're not all from the banking industry, but that blend of talent that we're, you know, breeding around the table is, is immense. And what we're able to do now is actually elevate our game when we're dealing with clients because we have different perspectives, right? We're avoiding the whole group think. This is the way we've always done it. That's starting to dissipate. And what we're really getting is diversified thoughts around how to build a better team, how to service the client better. And truly, Anish, you know, I think our, our employees are really the differentiator here. There's lots of different variations on our products, but the true differentiator is how we treat our clients and we do that through the interactions they have with the employees. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I think it all begins and ends with, uh, does the client get what they need? And the better people you have, the better they can, they can do that. One of the other themes that's come up a lot when we talk about offering different services or products out to customers is that you want to bank people or interact with clients the way that they want to interact with you, not the way that you want them to interact with you. And that's why we so many different channels we you know people can interact with us over the web or on mobile or you know through a person or whatnot i suppose that applies to service as well right you want to be able to offer people self-service options have them be able to call um you know call someone and talk to a live human uh, or do any one of a number of items right how do you think about sort of that omni-channel service experience it's, it's a great question you know and i and I, you use the word twice in in, in your question and then i'll repeat it it's optionality mm -hmm. right we have such a diverse client base right they represent all industries large and small clients we know some of our clients are large and have large scale operational teams. We know some are small and sometimes someone down to the CFO or treasurer will be wearing many, many hats, right? And how we service them is really important. And I think the key word for us is personalized, right? That's the word that I would use to describe how you win in the service market. We can't customize, right? Customization is very expensive, but when it comes down to personalization, every client wants to know they matter. And that means we have to understand our clients. We have to listen to them. We have to, we have to understand how they want to be interacted with, right? And give them that personalized service. And to your point, Anish, some of them want to um, only interact with us digitally. Mm -hmm. So that might be through a virtual assist. That might be through live chat or email. Some want to pick up the phone and talk to a service person that actually knows their industry, knows their product, knows their business, and they want to interact with them live. Our objective is to provide all of those capabilities, right? To deliver all that service. So how do we do it? And I think our secret sauce is the client experience team, right? We measure what clients want. We talk to them. We set up listening posts and we set up surveys. Sometimes we just do proactive reach outs but we look to listen to hear 
how they want to evolve their business, how they want to interact with us. Um, and we try to deploy some of those solutions to accommodate. And again, the more personalized we could get, I think the more success we will have here. And that's a great point too, because I think most people think about user research or client feedback or something like that as, as something that you do when you're going through the design or process or you're, you know, before you launch a product, et cetera. But what you're talking about is really once something is live and in use, how do you mine a lot of that feedback from clients for common themes that you can then feed back to the product teams to make their product that much better to address the client need, right? Can you say a little bit more about that? You nailed it. It's the continuous loop, right? We always have to be listening. Um, and, you know, we always, you know, Anish, you and I always go through this. What does good look like? Um, the answer should always be evolution, right? It should always be continuous improvement. It should be getting uh, a product or a service or capability out there, but then measuring it with the client to say, did it meet your needs? How can we make it better? How do we pivot? And we do that on pretty much everything we do, whether it's a product, whether it's a service, whether even if it's a small functional enhancement, um, we always look to see as clients adopt the capability, what they thought of it. And we use that as a way to improve, whether it be a product enhancement we have to make or a, a service in the way we have to interact with the client. Um, but I think that's the key, right? We just have to keep listening to what the clients tell us. So finally, Dee, not every company is as large as JP Morgan Chase. So for companies that you know, may not have their own client experience team or can't do all this by themselves, what advice would you have for them about things that they can do to enhance the experience for their clients? You know, back in 2020, Forbes did a survey and they said 60% of the firms who actually talked to their clients and brought them in as part of the design experience had 60% better revenue output. Okay. Think about that. So the two simple things I think any firm can do is one, invite the client theoretically, figuratively, physically to the table and make them part of the design experience. Everyone's got one or two or three or 10 friendly clients they can count on to actually help them design a better product solution. And we can ask clients, how do they expect to interact with the product? How do they expect to be serviced? Right, we get a lot of answers up front and embed those in the design. And then secondly, Anish, something you said very early on uh, when we first started this conversation was just around the end-to-end -end journey. Um, when we design solutions, we really have to go front to back. Um, it's not just about the slick user interface that you build for your client, but it's really that seamless integration that when the client's interacting with the UI, that the processing behind the scenes is really seamless, it's straightforward, um, and all of, the, all of the steps within that process are taken into consideration when you go live. Um, that's the best thing any, any firm can really do for themselves. Yeah, I think that's great. So to sum up overall, it's product innovation, it's designing products with the client experience at the center and doing so across the full end end journey, not just the front end and, you know, not being afraid to sort of, you know, revisit some of uh, your historical decisions on process. It's about service excellence you know, making sure that you're continuing that feedback loop, as you said, you know, once the product is live and in use, it's about hiring really good people and training them and supporting them and giving them the tools they need to be successful, right? And it's about listening to the client and inviting them in to be part of the process. Is that it? That's the secret sauce. Dee, thanks very much for joining us today and thanks for sharing your thoughts on this topic. Thanks for having me again, Anish. And to all of our listeners, remember, if you enjoyed this episode, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Tune in next time.